ma'am thank you adarsh we'll start in a moment So it's already four o'clock, everyone. I welcome you all to our exciting session today. Uh, today's session is about, or let me not disclose it. Let me ask you all. Um, you all are aware of the topic of today's session, right? What is it about? Yeah. Okay, Nihira, I'll come to you. Tell me which class you're in, and tell me where are you based, and then answer me a question. Answer me the question. Sorry. I'm in four B. Mm -hmm. So I my answer would be uh, we are learning about cheetahs today. <laughs> that was easy. Okay. <laughs> Can you also tell me why are we learning about cheetahs today? I think we lost connect with Nikira. Uh, Caleb is raising his hand. Yeah, Caleb, I have unmuted you. Uh, please tell me which class you are in and then answer me. Your answer me the question. I'm from 3C. I think we're learning about cheetahs only. Really? From, because, from, because, from 3Cs, what is that? I'm from 3C. Okay. I think we're going to be learning about cheetahs today. Okay, and why are we learning about cheetahs? Because they why not about tigers, why not about lions, why not about birds or anything else? Because they camouflage into their background. Uh huh. Okay, that is an interesting answer. I would request my uh, guest speaker today, Rajat, to please note the answer. Uh, okay. Uh, and, okay. Uh, Aratya, same one. Uh, Aratya also has an answer to my question. Aratya, uh, I have unmuted you. Please tell us why are we discussing cheetahs today? Um, Ma'am, we are discussing cheetahs today because after, I don't know how many years, 60 or something like this, cheetahs came in India on Prime Minister's birthday. Oh my God, this was bad gone. Aradhya, which class you are in and where are you from? Ma'am, I am in 5th B and I am from New Delhi. That's wonderful. Okay. We have a couple of more hands raised and I too have a couple of more questions to ask. So, let me ask a question to Bhomik Kar. Bhomik, I'm unmuting you. Uh, please tell us what is special about cheetahs? Do you know anything exciting about the cheetahs? And cheetahs are the fastest animal in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also they can camouflage in the dry leaves in forests. All right. Okay. So they are the fastest. And animal. they can also climb trees. So they can also climb trees. Okay. That is also correct. Hmm. So my last question would be, um, do we have cheetahs in India? 
has anyone seen a cheetah in the wild okay so um dia goel has her hand raised um dia thank you for joining us today please tell us a little about please tell us a little about yourself where are you from and uh, then answer the question okay mom i am 12 years old and i am from new delhi i want to uh, tell you that uh, cheetahs was uh... do we have cheetahs in india i think uh, there must be there could be some internet issue at dia's end so uh, we are not able to hear her at present um i'll i'll go on He's to on the board of oh, prime and uh, uh, and the uh, narendra modi take a program into So Dia are you of the opinion that we have cheetahs in India have you seen them in the jungles close to you I think there is some internet issue um and so okay so let me proceed on with the session uh I would like to tell all of you and I think all of you already know that uh, cheetahs had got extinct in india many years back and it's only recently that uh, our government has relaunched them into the country and it is in this context that we have we are hosting our session today we are trying to understand why they got extinct and why are they being reintroduced and if they are reintroduced then how much will it actually help our ecosystem how much is it going to benefit the environment is it actually going to benefit the environment is it actually going to benefit the cheetahs are they going to survive are they going to die what's going to happen to them and many many more questions about the issue so in order to deal with this topic we have an expert with us today uh this is rajat bhai i would like to tell you a little about rajat So Rajat is an associate editor with the Down to Earth website. He has been a journalist for about sixteen years. He has worked with some leading media houses in our country, and has worked across print, broadcast, and digital domains. Rajat has a very keen interest in history, wildlife, culture, cuisine, theology, and indigenous peoples. His friends and colleagues like us often refer to him as our walking talking encyclopedia. So here we are presenting to you an enriching session on cheetahs by Rajat. I will now request Rajat to please proceed with the session and tell us all the nitty gritties about this issue. Uh, yeah, uh, hi am I audible to everybody? Anubuti? Yeah. Okay. Lot of kids are showing thumbs up so I think that you are definitely right. audible. well uh, thank you anubhuti for uh, inviting me to this very special session uh, i'll just uh, uh, go into the session straight away uh, let me just share my change my settings a bit okay can you see yeah we can see it. if you can uh, put it on full screen mode that would be great yes okay so good afternoon and uh, welcome to this master class on the cheetah uh, as a number of you have said uh, it, uh, cheetahs were in the news recently because and as anubhuti also said cheetahs were in the news recently because they went extinct from our country in uh, 1952 so it's now 2022 and it's almost 70 years after uh, that particular event that they are they have come back to our country uh, we will try to understand in this session as to uh, what uh, what is the animal what are the characteristics of this animal what uh, is the history of this animal in india 
yes this is this is not an exclusively african animal as many of us would like to believe it was very much found in india and uh, lastly we will la try to learn what is the uh, project all about that the government of india has initiated so i'll just start with uh, a question to all of you can you see these two uh, animals on your screens yeah um, can you tell me what is the relationship between them yes anybody okay uh, can we go to uh, zeb siddiqui sure um zeb i'm unmuting you zeb thank you for joining our session i do recognize you from our previous session thanks for joining again and please tell us the answer can you increase your volume Zeb, can you type in the chat strip? So I think a lot of other kids also are a little interested in getting right. Please, uh, can can Anuruti, can you go across to some of them? Yeah. Um, one second. Okay. Sananya Singh, Sananya, would you like to answer this question, which is displayed on the screen? I'm unmuting you. Man, the relationship is that they both are cats. They are in the same family of cats. Very Thanks, well sir. spoken. Very well spoken. Very well spoken. So, as you have rightly said, these are both cats. And uh, if I may use uh, a saying or a proverb from uh, Hindi, which is popular in North India, "Billi ko sheer ki mausi mana jata hai, lekin usne kabi usko pehed chhodna se khaya nahi." so yeah these are both cats and the cat family uh, consists of uh, almost 36 or to 38 different types of cats uh, the what you see on your right is a uh, is an a siberian tiger and what you see on your left is a house cat right so let me uh, go across to another question that i want to put across to you hello just one second right so we have the answer to this one all right so anybody that can you display the question Yeah. Uh, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the biggest dog in hall? So, Sorya, you had asked us. I think. Uh, so, you, would you like to answer the question, Sorya? I'm unmuting you. Yes. Uh, I think. it's probably the fourth or the first one okay sorry where are you from which class are you in i am from delhi i am from seventh class okay so what's your answer uh, it's probably the fourth one the fourth okay. one you mean um okay the any the bottom any... right or the bottom left the bottom right i suppose i think uh, he is referring to the okay any any anybody else would like to hazard a guess 
Oh, wow. So there's so much excitement. Um, <clears throat> let me take, um, let me take Serena Narayana. Serena, would you like to answer? Please go ahead and speak up. I have unmuted you. Huh. Ma'am, uh, the lion. Okay, you think the lion yeah, is that's, the biggest of them all? That's also one. Uh, okay, that's one answer. Uh, mm. Let us gather one last answer, maybe. Right. Um, okay. So, Ardiki Rod. Ardiki? Where are you from, Ardiki? And please tell us the answer. Hello. Yeah. Hello, my name is Hadik Raut. I am from Nagpur. I am in Clash. You're, you're from Nagpur, is it? In this city. Okay. And you're in class two? Yes, I'm in class two. Okay. So, Hardiki, uh, which is the biggest animal among these four? I think the cheetah is the biggest on this. All, All, right. Right. All right. Okay. So, now uh, let me just... Uh, uh, clear up some matters. This is what you see on uh, the, your screen is four different types of big cats. The, the first one is uh, the Siberian tiger. The second one is the African lion. Uh, and if you go clockwise, the third one is the puma. And the fourth one uh, is the jaguar. Uh, and the right answer is the first. The Siberian tiger is the biggest cat in the world. Uh, it's found mostly in the Russian Far East uh, and uh, also parts of uh, China, Northeast China. It's the biggest cat in the world. It can weigh up to 300 kilograms or even more than that and can be up to 10 feet in length. Um, the lion comes second, uh, then comes the jaguar and then other cats. So in that order. Now, uh, I'll answer me uh, give me an answer to this question. Whom do you think the, the four animals that you screen, see on your screen, whom do you think is the fastest? Who runs the fastest? Anybody like to take a guess? Yeah, I, I think our chat strip was uh, flooding with answers uh, to some of the previous questions. Great, great, and we great. have Arshiman, Arav Singh, Anika, Iyan. Uh, everybody is saying that it's the cheetah, which is the fastest of them all. Okay, that's the right answer. Uh, so Yes, the cheetah is indeed the fastest and the fleetest among all terrestrial animals. And it can run to up to speeds of 120 kilometers per hour. The other animals that you see on your screen, uh, starting clockwise, one is a thoroughbred horse. It's a spe specific breed of horse that is used in racing. The second animal is Thompson's gazelle, which is basically a, a species of antelope found in Africa. It's one of the cheetah's main prey animals in Africa. And the third animal that you see clockwise is a greyhound. It's a kind of dog which is used in professional races. But the cheetah uh, out outflanks them, outstrips them all as far as running is concerned. So that is that. Now, answer this question, uh, if you can, which of these is the cheetah? You see three animals on your screen. Uh, which of these is the cheetah? Yes. Okay. So Aryan has been uh, insisting on answering the question. Aryan. Yes, Aryan. Yeah. Yes, Aryan. Yes, Aryan, tell us. Yes, ma'am. I think probably second one is the correct answer. The middle one. Second one. Okay. So Aryan says that it's the uh, uh, middle cat. All right. Anybody else? Um, okay. So... Uh, Anybody? Yeah, there are so many people. Uh, I'll I'll I think we'll just take one more response, then I can... Alec, would you like to answer the question? Please tell us uh, 
where you're from and then go ahead uh, i am from new delhi uh, okay. and i and i am from uh, i study in cambridge school okay i am in class 3c lovely okay so alec what is your answer which of these is the cheetah first the first one bingo bingo yes that is indeed the cheetah and the other two animals that you see on your screen the middle one is the jaguar which is found in uh, central and south america and the one on the right is the leopard which is found in africa and asia okay so now i'll take you through the characteristics of a cheetah what exactly is this animal this fastest animal on earth uh, on land uh, that we are also uh, enraptured with enchanted with right so let me begin uh, so it's all about spots and rosettes uh, as you saw in the uh, previous slide there were three animals you could all you could see was spots uh, on all of them but if you look closely there are differences for instance if you see uh, th this particular photograph it shows these three animals the cheetah the leopard and the jaguar uh, but if you see their coat patterns uh, 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 you can see uh, that the cheetah is the only true spotted cat that it, it, it has only spots the other two cats have what are called as rosette ros rosettes which are rose patterns and of course there is a difference between these two as well if you can see on the right hand side there is uh, in between the rosette there is there are spots there are small dots so that is the coat pattern of a jaguar and the middle one is the coat pattern of a leopard that that is how you differentiate between uh, these three animals another big difference is that uh, on the left when you see the cheetah's head shot there is a line running from the eye to the low upper lip that is its signature characteristic that is uh, you can instantly identify a cheetah anywhere in the world if you see that that and the spots and of course uh, the the jaguar that you see on the right has a more rounded head and uh, uh, of course th there are other more subtle differences which would not be uh um, available uh, i mean visible to uh, the naked eye of a lay person but an expert can of course identify that but these are the broadly the two main differences between these three animals which are all uh, bearing these patterns right uh now i there are other differences as well so uh, one uh, they are all about the teeth and the claws of these cats as you can see the cheetah's claws are visible in the first photograph you can uh, you see most cats of all, all these 36 to 38 cats that we have in the world have retractable claws the claws can go inside the paw when not in use when they are running when they are walking they will be unsheathed only when the animal is bringing down its prey so but the cheetah is one of the only few cats in the world out of those 36 or 38 whose paws are semi retractable they will not go inside the uh, the claws will not go inside the paw uh, but will remain where they are it gives the cheetah grip on the ground but it also makes them blunt uh, there is a, a reason for that i which i'll explain in the later part of uh, my presentation the other difference is you can see the dew claw uh, a claw on the leg the, the left leg in the picture this is called a dew claw why is it called a dew claw because it is said to remove dew when the cheetah is traveling uh, is walking through the grass so it's called a dew claw it also it's a vestigial organ like we humans have the appendix which you might be reading uh, learning about in your science lessons it's a vestigial organ it helps to uh, uh, the cheetah to grip its prey that is about the claws of the cheetah the other main difference is the dentition or the teeth as you can see in the photograph downstairs uh, i mean uh, uh, in the uh, lower part of the picture 
uh, you can see its entire teeth set. So the canines, the long pointed teeth that you see. Uh, now I'll ask. I'll just tell you something that we humans. Why do we have? Why do? Why are our jaws and teeth not the same as that of a lion and tiger? Why? Because our brain is more than the, uh, uh, is more than their brain size when compared to the body size. So because the brain takes that much size, our jaws are small. Similarly, that is the case with the cheetah as well. It has. Uh, uh it has a smaller jaw size but uh, and so its canines are also sharp but small which helps it to just shear its prey and uh, uh the teeth that you can see at the back of the mouth those uh, also help them in suffocating their prey so these are called canines and carnassials these are more well developed than a lion or a leopard and help them to consume their prey quickly in one sitting they just have to hunt their prey and quickly eat it because uh, i'll i'll explain you the reason why in uh, the later part of the presentation so just moving forward um, is it a big cat we use the word big cats loosely for all these uh, uh, wonderful animals but what is exactly a big cat a big cat basically is used to refer to in on your screen you can see all these animals but with the exception of the cheetah all the other animals are called big cats by scientists the cheetah is sometimes called a big cat but there is a controversy regarding that so uh, why are these called big cats because they have the ability to roar you understand roar sher ki dahad jo hoti hai sher kyun dahadta hai kyunki because their throat their voice box in their throat is arranged in such a manner uh, that they have the ability to roar but the cheetah does not have the ability to roar also these other animals that you see on the screen they are apex predators what are called as apex predators they don't have any uh, other competitors in their ecosystem the cheetah is not an apex predator and uh, so yeah those are the main big cats there is a controversy regarding the cheetah whether it is a big cat or not so what does a cheetah sound like it does not roar we know that so what does a cheetah sound like a cheetah makes a variety of vocalizations uh, these include chirring chirping chirring purring and bleating and yipping uh, let me give you an example of this are you able to hear everybody is able to hear no no rajat you will have to click the link okay are you able to hear now yeah. children are you able to hear that is what is called a purring of the cheetah this is called chirping this is called chirping all like that ha huh, children okay so i'll now just return to my presentation
now the other thing is uh, the cheetah is built born to run its body is slender uh, it has long limbs it has also got a tail that acts as a rudder because you see every its prey is capable of taking sharp turns while it is running on Yeah. and there is also uh, its heart and lungs are built in such a manner uh, that they can uh, take in more air or uh, oxygen rich air and uh, so it it uh, it can run fast at long bursts of speed i'll now show you uh, how it runs Can you see it? The final stalk begins. Rajat, can, can you, you all see it? Just one second. Okay. One second, don't worry. The final stalk begins. Others block her path. But in a flat out chase, nothing can outrun a cheetah. Wait to jump on top, she must trip her prey. Missed. But having timed her run to perfection, she still has energy to try again. Thanks for the video, Rajat. Please go on.
okay so now i come to the next uh, part of my presentation that cheetahs have never been man killers or man eaters there has been never been an instance of a cheetah hunting a human being there was only one instance of uh, a cheetah attacking a man but the, but otherwise they have been domesticated by man they are one of only two animals uh, two cats to be have been domesticated what you see in front of you is basically a uh, 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 scene from egypt where they are bringing cheetahs as tribute to the pharaoh so that's why the cheetah is very unique among cats or felines let me also tell you about uh, this word panther and black panther because there is a great misconception regarding these words there is panther is a very archaic word for leopard it's the, it does not mean anything else but black panther means a uh, basically a melanistic cat uh, melanin is something that is found in our uh, 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 in humans also it makes your skin darker or lighter based on its quantity similarly these cats have these um, uh, if they are there is a recessive gene it's all about genes we are all genetics so if there is a recessive gene uh, there will they will have a black coat but you can still be able to see uh the rosettes or the other patterns there are even black tigers melanistic tigers as you can see these are found in odisha in india so uh, this is these are called black panthers the the uh the animals on the top one is a black melanistic leopard the one, the other is a melanistic jaguar and the third one is a melanistic tiger right uh the closest to a melanistic uh, the closest a cheetah can come to a melanistic uh, uh, animal is this one the king cheetah as you can see its pattern the coat pattern is quite different there are three lines on the ridge of its back and its its spots are also irregular and wavy so these were basically uh, thought to be a species different species but now we know but they are not a different species they are just a uh, they are just have more melanin inside them right so this is what is the king cheetah they are found in mostly in southern africa but i also would like to broach upon lucism and albinism because people mostly confuse on these two things the two animals that you see in front of you are lucistic lucism means loss of every pigment from your body whether animal or human Uh, but there is a different uh, and albinism means loss of the uh, uh, pigment melanin so there is a difference between these two uh, uh, lucis lucistic animals will still have uh, normal colored noses and lips but albinistic animals will have pink colored noses because of, and eyes because their blood veins will be uh, visible now i come to uh, the cheetah's history in india so the cheetah as i was telling you uh, is not an exclusively african animal we would like to think they were african they are mostly found in africa but they were once found in the uh, in parts of asia also as you can see on the map the purple color suggests their uh, uh, their uh, past range so as you can see they were found in india also they are found in iran also they are found in uh arabia uh, middle east the caucasus region uh, central asia uh, right so this is their historical range now they are found only in africa and in iran very few uh, this is there are just 7000 cheetahs in the world most of them are in africa and most of them are in southern and eastern africa uh, with a very small just 12 cheetahs in iran remaining now according to latest figures this is what our colleagues my colleagues at down to earth had uh, prepared some uh, if you see our latest edition of earth, this is what we have prepared for that this is the current range of the cheetah uh, the yellow parts and the red is the past range of the cheetah as you can see india was in that uh, most of india not all of it but most of that along with pakistan and afghanistan too so this is the historical range of the cheetah in india as you can see it extended from punjab in the north to tamil nadu in the south 
and uh, from Ra Rajasthan and Sindh in the west to Bengal, almost Bengal in the east. This is uh, the cheetah's history in India is very old. It dates back to perhaps even the Indus Valley civilization. Uh, these kind. This is a painting in the Chambal uh, Valley of the Chambal region in Madhya Pradesh. As you can see, there is a spotted animal, and a hunter is taking aim at it. Aim at it. But some people have said this could be a leopard also. So we don't know. It's an open question. And these kind of paintings have been found in Bhimbetka in Madhya Pradesh, in Kharwai near Bhopal, and also in in the Indus Valley in Sin. Now, did you know, children, that the word cheetah comes from India? So one of the first uh, uh, texts to mention uh, it, in fact, is the English word cheetah comes from the Sanskrit chitraka, chitraka or chitrakaya, which means spotted or spotted body. So the first book, in fact, to mention this word chitraka is the Amar Kosh of Amar Sima. It's a Sanskrit dictionary which dates back to the 5th or 6th century uh, common era, which was uh, we, we earlier used AD. Now it's known as common era. So Chitraka, we can be proud of this fact that we gave the world the word Chita. Chitas were, uh, they reached their zenith in India the, uh, in during the time of the Mughal Empire. In this photo, uh, in this painting that you can see, the right side, you see the Emperor Akbar. He uh, had a uh, great love for cheetahs. As you can see, this, this painting has a very interesting story behind it. The cheetah that you see in the middle, uh, bringing down a black buck, this is uh, Chitra Najran, uh, who was one of the emperor's favorite cheetahs. This incident actually took place near Sanganer, where the Jaipur International Airport is now. And Chitra Najran basically jumped over a brook, a stream, and uh, brought this black buck down. It was the it was chasing this black buck. The black buck lumped, jumped over the stream. Chitra Najran jumped after him and brought him down. This is from the Akbar Nama, the which chronicles the reign of Emperor Akbar. But the cheetah's uh, decline in India began with the British Empire. Uh, as you can see in this photo, this photo is in fact by an artist from Finland who had recently returned from Africa. This is in fact about a hunting scene in Africa, but I would say that hunters in India also, uh, British hunters in India also hunted cheetahs in very much the same way. They regarded cheetahs as problem animals which used to lift cattle, sheep and goats and they hunted them also for just for sport that we have hunted cheetah, we are very brave, that kind of thing. Uh, by 1939, uh, there was a British naturalist called Reginald Pocock who concluded that the cheetah has now gone almost extinct in India. So what we had, we had, they were, the, this cheetah we had as part of our natural wealth, it was ex hunted to extinction uh, by the British. I, uh, but there is another side of the cheetah uh, during the British era also, which is basically uh, uh, the cheetahs used by Indian princes, Maharajas and Nawabs. Uh, I'll just show you a, a small peek uh, into how they use the cheetah for hunting. And there 
visit with an Indian prince by a day of cheetah hunting. The cheetahs, like the falcons, are captured when full grown, and through their appetites are trained to do man's bidding. Each Raja, cheetah I'll request you to increase the speed of the job video is to attend him at so all that time. we can cover it quickly. I think children would love Nanobi to watch the complete videos. That's fine. Only a ladle of blood is offered. But if her work for the day is done, she is rewarded with a full meal. Another cheetah is prepared to run. Right. Again, we approach See, her. this is how Indian princes use the cheetah for hunting. See, there you can see the cheetah running after herds of... Fortunately for us, the buck turns and runs towards us. In slow motion, both animals streak by. A study of two perfect runners in action. The cheetah trips his quarry... And this is and not Africa, this is India. ...while the buck fights valiantly and the trainers rush to aid the cheetah. The successful cheetah is hooded and well-fed. At times, a cheetah may catch two or three bucks a day, but usually one is the limit. Okay. Now I come to the last part of my presentation. It's basically, as you have seen, the, the, the princes used the cheetahs in another way. The British hunted them. But uh, ironically, the, the last cheetahs in India were shot by a, an Indian prince. This is Maharaja Ramanuj Pratap Singh Deo of the princely state of Korea in today's Chhattisgarh. He shot the last three cheetahs in 1947, they were all male and part of the, they were brothers. There were reports of cheetah sightings in the years ahead with the last sighting in 1967. But these are considered to be stragglers. They were not, there was no longer a, a population, a viable population of cheetahs any, anymore in, in the country. So it had gone extinct. Now, uh, in, nine, in 1952, it was declared as extinct in the uh, in India, which had become a republic by that time. In the 1970s, India tried to bring cheetahs back. We had lost our own cheetahs, but we asked Iran for cheetahs. But the, the Shah of Iran was considering it, but uh, the, uh, the gov his government then fell. And at the same time, there were political events in India as well. So uh, that deal could not come about. In 2003, India also asked uh, Iran to clone, let it clone its cheetahs. But Iran refused and that also fell apart. And now Iran itself has very few cheetahs. Then in 20, 2009 and 10, uh, the earlier government of Prime Minister Manmohan Singh uh, uh, they agreed to reintroduce African cheetahs in India. It would face a lot of hurdles in the year ahead. years ahead. In 2013, the Supreme Court ordered a ban on getting cheetahs from Africa. Uh, there are certain reasons for that. I'll explain to you what they are. Uh, but before that, let me uh, take you through why cheetahs should were to be relocated to India. What was the uh, rationale given for that? A relocation is done if a hunter or a predator has been made extinct. Uh, it's natural prey. Uh, there is no, nobody left to hunt its natural prey. So that natural prey rebounds in population. It then makes all sorts of nuisance and uh, it, it becomes a nuisance for humans also. 
in the yellowstone national park in the us the extinction of wolves had led to an overpopulation of deer uh, called elk but when the wolves were returned back to this park in the 1990s it brought about a, ba a balance in the elk population so that is one rationale for relocation the other one is another instance is the asiatic lions they are concentrated as you all know in one part of india uh, the gir national park uh, but if a catastrophic uh, catastrophe like a, a disease an epidemic were to strike them they would be all gone in uh, one second one go because there would be no other population in any other area so uh, lions were in introduced in other parts of india but uh, those efforts were, could not succeed then in 1990 the lion reintroduction plan was formulated and you know what the the place to reintroduce lions from gir uh, was Puno, Puno National Park, where cheetahs are now. Mm, it was this reason, uh, for this reason, that the Supreme Court laid a ban on cheetah, uh, bringing cheetahs, African cheetahs, back to India in 2012 or 2013. There were other issues also. Many people said that uh, if you bring cheetahs from Africa, they would bring exotic diseases uh, to our country. some people also said they would get into conflict with the local population they would hunt sheep and goats uh, mm, there was all this and uh, so uh, many people tried uh, there was there was an effort there were there were uh, opinions from all sides that cheetah should not be brought to india therefore the supreme court laid a ban on them that they should not be brought uh, but they were eventually brought as we know and these are the eight cheetahs from namibia that have been brought to india uh, on the prime minister narendra modi's birthday that is september 17 so as you can see they have all have foreign names but now it is reported that their names have been changed uh, uh, this is what we have prepared in our uh, uh, down to earth edition of course i i again thank my colleagues for that uh, there was also a concern that uh, there would be other predators uh, in kuno who would overpower and kill cheetahs like the sloth bear or the striped hyena or the leopard uh, however uh, scientists who were in charge of the project said that cheetahs also uh, um, live alongside predators like lions and leopards in africa also and they are managed able to manage pretty well on their own so there is, there should not be any problem with bringing cheetahs to puno they will be able to survive that's what the experts said a last concern was should we bring asiatic cheetahs or african cheetahs because uh, we had asiatic cheetahs in india but scientists have now confirmed that whether cheetahs are asiatic or african they are genetically the same so we we could bring african cheetahs which is why the supreme court in 2020 uh, lifted the ban on bringing cheetah african cheetahs to india and this is the result uh, on september 20 september 17 2022 the prime minister released african cheetahs brought from namibia into their enclosures in kuno national park what will happen to these cheetahs the plan is uh, to establish a population of cheetahs uh, in india um, at least 50 in the coming few years whether that succeeds or not uh, depends on uh, circumstances in the next few years in the next few months if you go through news headlines you will be able to see there is lots of development on this topic but this is why cheetahs were brought to india and uh, this is the his we have had a long history of cheetahs in india uh, they went extinct due to our own foolishness uh, due to our own greed and lust now they have been brought back we have to see whether they will be able to survive or and thrive or whether this will end in failure it all depends on the future coming months and the years ahead so uh, thank you for um, listening to my presentation i hope you have gained some 
uh, good knowledge from what I uh, spoke about, and I would be welcome to uh, I would welcome you to ask me any questions, any queries that you have. Thank you so much, Rajat, for such. One second. Thank you so much, Rajat, for such an informative presentation. I think our kids uh, and all of us learned a lot about this issue uh, that you have talked about. I will now ask all the students, uh, whosoever wants to ask a question, can uh, raise their hands and I will come to them. So I see uh, Kavish Patra's hand raised up right there. Uh, Kavish, your hand is unmissable. <laughs> Please tell me where are you from, what is your class, and then pose your question. Uh, I am. I am. I study in four C, and okay. I am from Delhi. Uh, my question is that is ostrich faster or cheetah? Uh, thank you, Kavish, for asking me that question. Uh, well, uh, any day the cheetah is faster because scientifically it has been proven that the cheetah is fast, the fastest land animal on earth. It can. Uh, it can run anywhere between. 100 kilometers to 120 kilometers per hour. And if you see, if you saw that video closely, you would be see, uh, you would have saw, uh, seen that all four uh, legs of the cheetah were in the air while it was running at full speed. That behavior is called galloping. So very few animals are able to run at those speeds. One of them is the horse. One of them is the prong on, which is a type of uh, deer found in North America. Uh, so it's called galloping, uh, the greyhound, as you saw in that photograph. Uh, there is, but there is no match for the cheetah anywhere else in the animal kingdom. Thank you, Rajat. The next question is from Umang. Uh, Umang has been uh, listening to our session throughout. Umang, please ask your question. My doubt is this. Cheetah faster or tiger? No. Uh, hi, Oman. Thank you for your question. Uh, no, the cheetah is faster. And I'll give you a reason for that. Because the cheetah, we think the cheetah is found in the jungle. But it's not. It's found in places called as grasslands, where grasses grow. Long, tall grasses grow. It's open plain. You can the cheetah can run at fast speeds in such open areas, chasing its prey. As I said, it is born to run and chase down and kill its prey. It is not born to stalk and ambush its prey like the tiger does. Yes, the tiger can run faster than a human being. It can run faster than you and me, but it can't run faster than a cheetah. Thanks, Rajat. Uh, there are a lot of hands up there. Uh, Anam, you have raised your hand for quite some time. Uh, would you like to ask a question? Please tell us which class you are in and where you are from and then uh, ask us the question. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to ask a question. I am Anam from class 5 uh, Cambridge School Delhi and I wanted to ask that can us children do anything to save cheetahs? Oh, that's a very poignant question. Rajat, please tell us some tips and tricks. Uh, uh, that's Yes, that's a very good question. All I can suggest is that children, you should Try and learn as much as you can about our wildlife, the wildlife of other countries of the world as well. Because as you know, wildlife everywhere, not just wildlife, even plants, because of man's greed and lust for, um, for getting the best for himself, uh, he's, uh, humans are killing animals and uh, destroying plants. So try to get and, and get in, ingrain as much knowledge as you can. Maybe when you grow up, you can become wildlife conservationists. You can become botanists and you can suggest, uh, teach the society uh, 
uh, what can be done to save these animals uh, for the moment it's uh, uh, you have to just study and uh, grow up and uh, who knows if you are interested in these topics in if you are interested in plants and animals you can take up uh, uh, studying uh, a course about these and uh, help society uh, to uh, make society aware that these are our own natural wealth and natural heritage it should not be destroyed that is all we have our next question i'm sorry rajat to cut you uh, we have a long queue of students who are excited to ask you the questions uh, we have soham soham has his hand uh, raised big time uh, soham please tell us where are you from and ask us your question Uh, I am I am from Cambridge School Three B Delhi. Wow, it's wonderful to see so many kids from the Cambridge School. Yes, please, uh, please ask your question. I am asking that uh, is Cheetah faster or Gati Man Express? <laughs> well, that is actually a different question, but a very let different. me answer that. Let me answer that. so so an interesting question from you but uh, the cheetah is a living thing it's made of flesh blood and bones the gatiman express is a machine invented by humans uh, the cheetah will tire out after some time but the gatiman express will not tire out of course the gatiman express can get uh, that can get damaged its machinery can get damaged and then it can stop but yes there is no comparison between cheeta and gatiman express because one is a non living thing one is a living thing so i don't think uh, that comparison can be made so great but the question was very interesting thank you so hum uh, who would like to ask the next question um, okay i see arjun raval uh, arjun uh, which class do you study in i uh, you can unmute yourself hello ma'am i am from uh, um chemistry school 3 i am studying in 3b wow i really I thank the teachers to... for uh, uh, popularizing our event so much among all of you thank you so much uh, cambridge school particularly uh, arjun yes please go ahead and ask your question i want to ask a question that who is the dangerous cheetah or jaguar uh, hi arjun thank you for your question so yes uh, as i told as i said in my presentation the cheetah has never killed a human being in recorded history it has never killed a human being it has uh, it's not a man eater it has in fact been domesticated by man tamed by man and used for man, by man for hunting other animals Uh, which then uh, humans can use can uh, you, the eat meat so uh, the, but the jaguar on the other hand there have been instances when jaguars have killed human beings so definitely uh, the jaguar is dangerous than the cheetah but the cheetah is a very uh, it's a very gentle cat you 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 don't have to fear it and sir uh, my name is ayas Uh, my name is my name is Aryavansh. Okay, okay. Thank you, Aryavansh. Um, all right. For our next question, uh, I would take in um, Aritra Adhikari. Uh, Aritra, we will take two, three more questions now, and then we will close the session. All right. So, uh, everybody, uh, please remain prepared with your questions. Aritra, uh, please tell us. So uh, what's your question for Rajat what did you like best about our presentation today um uh, mama i i am aritra adhyari i am from kimri school delhi and i i study in 3b okay and my question is that uh, what is the length and size of the cheetah okay 
Uh, well, uh, thank you, Aritro, for your question. Uh, uh, as far as body size is concerned, uh, the cheetah is taller than a uh, leopard. Uh, the limbs of a cheetah are uh, longer. Uh, as far as size is concerned, I would say that it is roughly the size, the same size as, uh, say, an Alsatian dog or any other species of medium-sized dog. In fact, for a long time in history, the cheetah was considered to be a dog itself. When later on, scientists found that, no, it is a type of cat. So it was considered to be a dog. So it's almost the size of your normal Alsatian or Labrador or or any other type of medium-sized dog. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay. Our next question or the second last question is from... Uh, I'm going to Pranav Chavla. Pranav, are you there? Yeah, Pranav, are you there? Would you like to ask a question? No, I think we don't have Pranav, but I see a very senior student, uh, Abitha. Abitha, thanks for joining us. Uh, would you like to ask a question to Rajat? Please tell us which class are you from and where are you based? Yes, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. I'm Abita. I'm studying in 10th class. I'm okay. from Bangalore. From Bangalore? Yes, ma'am. I'm from Bangalore and I study in Kendra Vidyalaya School. <clears throat> and my question is that why did you name the session Chasing the Cheetah? Okay. All right. So uh, that's a nice question. Well, the I think, Anubhuti, you should answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah, the announcement was prepared by me. So I think I'm the person who should be answering this question. Um, well, this was just an interesting or a catchy title we thought of to uh, gather attention for this session. And uh, uh, when you get into a little bit rationale about the title, then uh, uh, as we are trying to understand the various issues about the cheetah, uh, why were they? Why did they actually got lost from India, and why are we reintroducing them? And there are a host of questions which are uh, still puzzling about this: whether they will survive or not, or um, uh, how do we ensure that uh, uh, they uh, we benefit from uh, our ecosystem benefits from uh, their presence, or uh, what all should we do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Uh, Chasing the cheetah is about chasing the various questions uh, which are around the issue and, uh, try, and uh, attempting to find an answer to it. I'll, I'll just add to what uh, uh, Anubhuti has said. What is, the, um, what is the thing that you remem uh, remember when you say the word cheetah? The, the thing that you remember is speed, right? Yeah. So uh, chasing the cheetah is basically a pun on that ability of this animal to run so fast. And Anubhuti did a fine job at uh, running it and yeah. basically alliteration, right? Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for uh, Abita for joining us. Um, I think we have a couple of more queries from kids over here. And uh, I would request all of you to please email your question now uh, to young at the rate down to earth .org .in. Uh, I would love to pass on your questions to Rajat, who is my colleague over here in office. And we would together ensure that every single question of yours is answered. Uh, I think I would now close the session and uh, we'll unmute everybody. You can now say your thank yous and goodbyes to all of us. Uh, to Rajat. Uh, also, at the same time, before closing, please make sure that uh, you check out our latest magazine. Uh, I hope you all know that we launch the Gobo Times magazine every month for all of you kids. Every single month, we come up with very interesting topics uh, and try to simplify them for you and try to tell you how uh, they are related to the environment. 
so please do make sure that you check out our latest uh, Gobo Times edition. The current edition is about food fright. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sukanya, for pasting the link on the chat. Uh, you can press this link and check out all the previous editions of our wonderful magazine. I think you would really love it and enjoy reading it. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Um, I will request Sukanya to unmute all of you and then you can say your thank yous and goodbyes. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you, ma'am.